All right, um, thanks for joining. We're going to talk about uh, chapter 1.7, which is absolute value equations and inequalities. So our objective is to solve and apply absolute value equations and inequalities. Um, this stuff here is not super important. Um, we'll figure that out as we go on. Um, but recall that the absolute value is the distance uh, away from zero. Okay, so if we just, for example, look at something basic like the absolute value of x equals 5. Okay, I want to know what two numbers are 5 units away from zero. So if we have zero, what number is 5 units this way and what number is 5 units this way? Well, that's pretty easy because we know that 5 units that way is 5 and 5 units this way is negative 5. Okay, but, but this isn't the difficulty level we're going to look at. What happens if I change uh, or slide this uh, window down? Or what happens if I stretch or shrink that window? Um, that's the kind of stuff we're going get, to get into. The first thing about absolute value is it helps us find the distance between two numbers. So this is a number and this is a number. Okay, And you do this right here, subtract them and take the absolute value. You do that in your head really fast. Like uh, if I ask you what's the difference or what's the distance between 150 and 100, you automatically say 50. Why? Because you just know that they're 50 units apart, but you would subtract and find the absolute value. So if we look at this example here, uh, find the distance between negative 4 and 3 on a real number line. Well, you know, most of you can just look at this and tell me it's 7. Okay, But what's going on? Well, we're at negative 4, 0, and 3. How far apart are those? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You can also say 3 minus negative 4 is 7. Okay, 3 minus negative 4 is 7. Now, two value of 7 is 7. Or you could flip it around. Negative 4 minus 3 equals, well, negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. The absolute value of negative 7 is still 7. So you've been doing that uh, for, for many years, but that's how we use absolute value. That's one use of the absolute value. Um, so for absolute value equations, if the absolute value of, of x equals a, num a number, okay, let's just say that's a sum number, then x equals a or negative x equals a. This number, if we come back here, we come back to this example, this number in here, what we were looking for, could have been a negative 5 or it could have been a positive 5. That's why we take negative x and positive x. So the one thing you really need to take from this lesson here is that uh, to undo slash get rid of absolute value to get rid of, of this symbol here you must split into the positive and negative this is the positive this is the negative that's the only way we can get rid of the absolute value you can't distribute we can't distribute into this. We can't just ignore it and, and let it go away. We have to split it into two. Okay? And, and this is a very easy uh, thing to do. So like we did with radicals, okay, we have to isolate the absolute value, meaning nothing can be outside of it. Um, with this one, that's fine. We're good. Um, there's nothing outside. So we will just take the positive x minus 3 equals 8, or we look at the negative. Okay. This would be an and or an or. Okay, One of these will happen, or both of them could happen, Okay, just depending on 
on how it's set up. Okay. Uh, we look at and for the most part. I pick up this number and this number, but you can't pick two numbers at once. So, uh, so the positive here doesn't change anything. So we'll say x minus three equals a. Add three plus three, so x is eleven. Now the negative here, when I distribute that, changes the sign of everything in the absolute value. So that's kind of a quicker way of looking at that. And we'll subtract 3. Negative x equals 5 and x equals minus 5. Okay. So those are my two answers. Now what is that really talking about? Well, if I look at my number line, I have negative 5. And 11 out here. Let's just put a bunch of lines in there. That's 11. And I want to know what number was was eight units or what? Well, that would have been your three right here. Eight units this way and eight units this way was three. So this question is really asking what numbers are eight units away from three? That's what it's asking. And we will get more into uh, how do I know those kind of things um, later on. All right, so I have absolute value of 1 minus 3x equals 7. So again, the absolute value is all by itself. So I will take the positive, which changes nothing. But then I will take the negative, which turns it to minus 1 plus 3x equals 7. Uh, so we'll minus 1, negative 3x equals 6, divide by minus 3, x equals minus 2. Add 1 plus 1, 3x equals 8, divide by 3, divide by 3, and x equals 8 thirds. And those are your two answers. Okay. Uh, the, book, the book here will put it as set notation, which I'm okay with. If you want to look at it that way, uh, that's, that's okay. I'm more worried about it is can you split these up and solve them? All right, now here's the tricky looking one. I've got two absolute values in there. Now, when we look at this, it looks rather confusing and difficult. Okay. But we had a method to where we could take this difficult problem and make it easy, and that was u substitution. So if I let u equal x minus 1, We'll take this absolute value of x minus 1 out. And we'll say 2 minus 3u equals minus 4u plus 7. Now, this is very. This becomes an algebra 1 problem. We'll add 4u. And get u. That cancels. We'll subtract 2. And we'll get 5. So u equals 5. Well, again, I don't care about that part. So I get to plug this back in. Now it, it looks like the problems we've been dealing with. So how do I get rid of the absolute value? I'll take the positive. I'll take the negative. So I'll add 1 plus 1. x equals 6. Minus 1 minus 1. Negative x equals 4. x equals minus 4. And there we go. So really, I could take out the absolute value and rearrange everything, getting it by itself. Or these are like terms, so I could have left it in there. It's just I think it's much easier to take it out uh, and work through it. All right, the absolute value of 1 minus 3x equals negative 1. Okay. Now. Let's just think about this problem a little bit. I have the absolute value of something equals negative 1. The distance away from some number equals a negative number. This cannot happen. There's no solution here. It can't happen. Now, can you physically take this over here, split it up, and work it out? Sure, you can. 
and if you do, I just remind you, make sure we're checking our answers back here. When I plug it back in, this will be uh, a negative one. But the absolute value of negative one is one. Okay, you can't get that to be a negative number. So just watch your problems there. Uh, the absolute value of 5 minus x squared equals 1. Again, the absolute value is alone, so we're good. We'll take 5 minus x squared equals 1, and negative 5 plus x squared equals 1. Uh, so minus 5 minus 5, negative x squared equals minus 4. Divide by negative 1, x squared equals 4. Square root both sides, x equals plus minus 2. There's one part. Now we got to do the other side. Plus 5, plus 5. X squared equals 6. Square root, square root. X equals plus minus square root of 6. I can't break that down anymore. This would be a good example of how maybe I got to use a quadratic formula on it. Maybe I can factor it. Okay. Though all those things are going to come into play here. So with absolute value inequalities, we solve it using the same steps that we did before. However, this will describe an interval that is a specific distance away. So if we go back to that example we, we looked at earlier with the 5, if I said the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 5, okay, we first start out by here's 0, this one's 5 units that way, and this one's 5 units that way. But if I want to know what numbers are less than five units away, that would include all these numbers in here. So I would say that maybe that is um, negative five comma five, and we'd have closed circles on there. That's what we're looking at. Okay, That's the interval for my solution. Again, is the absolute value all by itself? Yes, so I will take the positive and I will take the negative. Okay. Now, a lot of people, when, when they start doing, uh, let's just look at one of the basic ones here. When they start looking at this, they say, well, why can't I just put seven and negative seven? Well, in this case, you could have. You could have, and you would have got the same answer. But in the case of inequalities, you can't just make this a negative seven without changing the sign. So I, I tend to stay away from that strategy um, because here I don't have to worry about flipping that sign yet. I will flip it later on, but, but we'll see when that occurs. So if I just change the signs here and here, that will be beneficial. It also goes back to this definition of splitting it up. Did I change the value of A? No. The distance, which is what A is, doesn't change. It can't be negative. What can be negative is the value inside the absolute value. So we'll add 2. 3x is less than or equal to 9. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. x is less than or equal to 3. Over here, we're going to subtract 2. Negative 3x less than or equal to 5. Divide by negative 3. And when I divide by that negative number, I have to flip the direction of my inequality. So I get x is greater than or equal to negative 5 thirds. Now that's good and all, but this is an interval. So to get the interval, I find it much better to graph it out. So we're at 3, and I want x to be less than 3. And we're over here at negative 5 thirds. And I want x to be bigger than that. Now, where do my solutions come from? You got it. They come from where they intersect, right there. So this up here would be an intersection sign. So my interval would be negative 5 thirds, comma, 3, bracket. That's the solution I'm looking for. That tells me that any number in here has a distance of less than 7 than the, than the middle number there. All right, a couple more here. The absolute value of 1 minus 2x is greater than 5. So absolute value is by itself. That's good. 
So we'll take 1 minus 2x is greater than 5, and negative 1 plus 2x is greater than 5. So again, we're just solving them. Minus 1, minus 1, negative 2x is greater than 4. Divide by minus 2, x is less than negative 2. Again, I divided by negative, you got to flip the sign. So plus 1, plus 1. 2x is greater than 6, divide by 2, divide by 2, x is greater than 3. So now we graph it out. I've got open circles here. So I'm at minus 2, x is less than minus 2, x greater than 3, here's 3, greater than that. So this tells me my interval. We will have negative infinity, comma, negative 2, parentheses, union, 3, comma, infinity. And this is what we, we just worked on um, the other day. All right, so now uh, we'll look here. Now, in this case, the absolute value is not by itself. So I will need to do that. We'll subtract 2. So negative 3x, absolute value, less than minus 1. It is still not by itself. you got this negative outside, so we'll divide by minus 1. And again, when I do that, I need to flip the direction of the sign. Now that the absolute value is all by itself, we can go into the splitting it up. So I get 3x greater than 1, or negative 3x greater than 1. So divide by 3, x is greater than 1 third, divide by minus 3. I also have to flip the sign, x is less than minus, three, minus 1 third. Graph it out. Here's one third. Open circle. Here's negative one third. Open circle. So x is bigger than one third, but it is less than negative one third. So that's kind of similar to the other one there. So we have negative infinity to minus one third, union one third to infinity. And there's your interval. So I can pick any number uh, outside of that. There's one more kind of problem I, I want to look at before your suggested problems here. Um, and let's just look at, at this one real quick. Two, one, minus. Okay. Something like this. Okay, the absolute value is not alone. So I want to get it alone. So I'll add four. So two, one, minus x equals. 6, divide by 2 now, okay, I cannot distribute this 2, I just need to divide by the 2, so then I'll get 1 minus x, absolute value equals 3, now since the absolute value is all by itself, we'll split it up, 1 minus x equals 3, and negative 1 plus x equals 3 also. So then we'll minus 1, minus 1, negative x equals 2, x equals minus 2, add 1, plus 1, x equals 4. And those are my two answers. Okay? So we can do some different, a lot of different type of combinations uh, with that. Um, so here are your suggested problems. Again, 98 is a challenge problem, uh, so give that a try if you got troubles. And you want me to work it out for you before or after school, I'll certainly um, do so. As always, thanks for watching. This is at THS Mr. Jones signing off.